Hello and welcome to Mimosa Tech Talk, a new podcast by Mimosa Networks. We're on episode number 42 today. I'm your host, Dustin Stock. And I'm Eric Thompson. We'll be talking about Mimosa 5 Series point-to-point radios. We'll be talking about antennas, adapters, and more. So, Eric, tell me, what what does that mean? What is point-to-point? What is backhaul? Yeah, point-to-point and backhaul are generally the same thing. It's kind of a wireless bridge. So think of it this way. If I need to connect two points, say, from the fire station rooftop to a, uh, to a mountain a couple of miles away or across the street, uh, instead of running copper line or fiber, why don't we send the data through a wireless bridge or two radio points? So PTP and backhaul are essentially the same thing. So basically a, a very long Ethernet cable, you know, depending right. on how di- you know, much of distance you have. Yeah, if you can get some speeds, why not just send it wirelessly over the air? Right. So, yep. Great. So uh, we, we want to highlight our five series point-to-point radios today. So we have, for those that are watching at home, uh, we have the B5X on the left-hand side of the screen here and the C5X on the right-hand side. For those that can't see us or aren't watching us and just listening to us, uh, the B5X is a you know, not very large radio, but it's it's bigger than the C5X. It's got a twist port on it. The C5X has a twist port on it. Um, and we'll talk about the B5X. So it's a one gigabit plus uh, wireless radio using auto TDMA mode. It does two by 80 megahertz channels, but you can also do one by 80, or you can do one by 40, one by 20, two by 20, or two by 40. So you have a lot of different options there depending on the noise that you have. We also have auto channel, which you can turn on and let the radio pick a, a good channel mm-hmm. or you know, change channels as needed when interference is uh, introduced on a link. We have GPS for co-location. So you know, with GPS timing and TDMA, you, you get you know, the best performance possible. And of course, it's you know, made out of die-cast aluminum, so it's a uh, very rugged design, IP67. Uh, Eric, do you have anything you want to add about B- B5X? Sure, the, the B5X. So as you can see, as we as we know, it, ha- it comes with an IP67 uh, ETH gland, so that's weatherized. It also has a little rubber boot in there keeping, keeping moisture and insects and things out of the, uh, out of the port. Um, it has an onboard um, ATBI native horn, so that's also uh, weatherproofed and uh, IP67 rated. So you can use this right out of the box once it's unlocked. Uh, however, the kind of the beam width is pretty broad, so generally we like to mitigate noise and kind of clean things up, and so we'll often, uh, we also offer the X12, X16, X20, and X25 uh, DB dishes for longer mid and longer distances. Which we'll show you here in a couple mm-hmm. more slides. Um, so what do you say the beam width is on that? You think it's like, I think it's like 45 or 48 yeah, degrees? Yeah, um, with the, the built-in as is out of the box, you're looking at, uh, it's 48 or 54, I want to say. It's oh, pretty, okay. it's pretty wide. So if you have a couple of these, maybe they're co-located, like Destin mentioned, the TDMA on board, you know, using GPS for running, maybe you have two, three or four of these guys on a single location. Uh, you want to tighten up that beam width, and we recommend putting like uh, an X25. That's our 18-inch dish, 25 dBi gain, good uh, mid-long distance. That tightens the uh, the beam width down to um, uh, 12 degrees, and uh, cleans things up quite a bit. Right. So while you can't operate this without a dish, you know, short-range distances, I yeah. personally don't recommend that. You know, if if you want to do a, a really really cheap installation, sure. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure your customer, customers have a high-quality connection. So using a, an antenna of some kind would be preferred. And it's the same thing for the C5X here. So the C5X, it is the, the lighter version. It's the, the more cost-effective version. You can do 750 megabits up to, mm-hmm. you know, using auto TDMA mode. Uh, it's a 1 by channel radio. So you can do 1 by 80 1 by 40 or one by 20 So it's basically half the power of the, the B5X. But this is one of Mimosa's top sellers, and not just in the U.S. markets, but in South America, in the Middle East, in Asia. We mm-hmm. have over 500,000 of these radios alone unlocked around the world because people love this product so much. And it's also made out of die-cast aluminum, and it's IP67 based as well. And for those of you who have used Mimosa for a long time, you might remember the C5X having the plastic door on it, mm, and it was yeah. an IP55 based 
Well, we, of course, know that's not usable for a lot of people around the world, especially those that are near the beach or, or something like in, in real wet or, or temperate climates because you're going to get really? wire, water or moisture in there. Yeah, so it's been, it's been uh, nicely uh, upgraded to the 67 with the 67 clan. I guess we should it, – it's also, you know, it's a point-to-point. Point. It could be unlocked as point-to-point. The radio has versatility. It's also a PTMP, point-to-multipoint client radio with a Mimosa access point. But more on that on another podcast. Absolutely. Right? We'll another cover point. that in yep. another podcast for sure. So you mentioned antenna size earlier. So for those that are watching at home, we have an example of the 12 dBi horn, the 16 dBi horn here on the left-hand side. Then we have the 20 dBi dish and the 25 dBi dish. So in my personal experience, and I think a, a lot of wisps out there probably gravitate toward the dish antennas over the horns for 20 and 25 dBi here in the U.S., but I think the, the 12 and the 16 are very popular in Europe because people really desire low profiles. But, you know, the good thing with our radios is they're already small to begin with. So using a small antenna with a small radio makes it a very, very low profile. It's a very cheap installation, but you can still push a lot of speeds across those links as well. Right, good point. And so let's look at a 12 and a 16, for example. So those, again, those, those are going to a very wide uh, beam width. So, so the pattern's pretty wide. So it's a little, little uh, less uh, forgiving. So um, you're connected to an access point. Let's say uh, you can, you can uh, the pattern's wider, so depending on distance, you can, you know, it's a little, little less forgiving. We still like you to peak your signal regardless of the dish you're using. And again, back to point to point, absolutely imperative you peak signal on both ends of your uh, link, so right. regardless of the uh, antenna use. All right, Eric, do you have anything else you want to comment on uh, the dishes before we move on? As, and so as mentioned, so we've got our 12, 16, and once we go up to 20, 25, uh, we again narrow the beam width. These are our pro likely our uh, these are these are our most popular for point to point in, in, for the five series twist on, uh, uh, providing tighter beam width patterns as we mentioned and longer distances, mm -hmm. like link distances. Yeah. But we're missing something very important here. We aren't sure we? are. I have an idea what you're about to say. I'm not gonna. Uh, so before I move on, I, I you know the B5X, you know we talked about it before, but. You know, it, it was first introduced to be a replacement for the B5. The B5 had a built-in 25 dBi dish. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have the 25 dBi here. So it's perfect. And, and if you needed a smaller dish or antenna size, you, we had that. But a lot of people were looking for something, a larger dish maybe, you know, 30, 32, 34, 35, and, and up. Right. And so when the B5C got discontinued, you know, people were desperate for that. Right. And we were lucky that we have, you know, third-party vendors out there who have larger dish sizes, but people were looking for something from us. So I'd like to introduce the Mimosa 30 dBi antenna. And some of you who've talked to me or Eric or, or Jeff, who's not here on the show today, at shows, you know, we've mentioned the 30 dBi dish before, but this is actually going up for pre-sale uh, here in the next week or so of recording this show. And probably within, uh, you know, a week of you guys initially watching the show. And then it should be available sometime, you know, at near the end of the May. But, you know, people have been looking for a 30 dBi dish because 30 is a huge staple, I think, personally, yeah. in the WISP market today. You know, 30 dBi antennas, uh, people are pushing 20, 25 miles out of them. Yeah, and more. We're, we're looking at, in kilometers, we're looking at uh, uh, 60 uh, 80 kilometers is, is al also typical for a two foot 30 ish uh, dBi uh, dish. So, but yeah. you know that really depends on the the interference levels in your area sure. and, and the transmit powers. Sure. You know some of those folks around the world who don't have to worry about the FCC regulations, they can you know really crank that power up and, and really push the distance on these radios. Mm. So um, I'm certainly not advocating for you to do that if you're you know in a country that has regulations, please don't, you know, you know, go against your regulatory body because we don't want to get in trouble and we don't want you to get in trouble either. And, and if you take your, uh, the user interface and the radios, uh, you can keep track of some of these things. It'll, it'll compute, uh, calculate your ERP. So if you go in and say, I want transmitter power level this, and I'm using 25 dBi or a 30 dBi, I get this. I just 
tally both of those numbers together, I get the EIRP. Uh, so that's shown in all of our uh, user uh, graphic user interfaces. So, so Eric, now that we're at the thirty, do you mm -hmm. want to pick it up real quick and show it off to the the folks watching at home? Sure. Give give the A B C D bullet points there. Absolutely. Okay. So Eric's going to go ahead and grab it for those that are watching at home. But again, it's a thirty dBi dish. It currently supports the B5X and C5X or point to point, but not listed here. And we'll go into in a different show. But it also supports the C6X or point to multi point as well. It's easy to ship. It comes in pieces that Eric will talk about here. And of course, it supports from 4.9 to 6.4 gigahertz. So Eric, let's go ahead and show All us right. off. How's that? So there's the front, and we can see the sub-reflector, the primary reflector. Let's bring it down a little bit in there. Um, and then here, we'll show the rear. So we can see... We can see we have a robust L bracket, so it was kind of, we kind of took our B5, we kind of took our uh, B5, and kind of beefed up the bracket to accommodate the two footer here. We've got a thread port, it's ready for your uh, C5, uh, your B5 uh, series, ready to go. And right currently, it's shipping in packet packs of two. Yeah, it will be shipped in packs of two right off the bat. Can you talk about the size of that pack? And, and sure, the, 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 the package, I haven't seen the box itself, however, the, the, the f excellent news is that you can, you can read the, the pedal, these are the pedals on the primary reflector here. So these pedals, these little pie-shaped pieces, uh, come together stacked, so that, that uh, eliminates big box size. Uh, and we've got our sub-reflector, we've got full instructions on how to place it, put it together, and it comes with uh, L-bracket, and ready to go. So to elaborate on, on Eric talking about coming in individual pieces, so basically in the box, you have what he calls the pedals. So the, the pieces of the antenna are individually wrapped in plastic and they're stacked on top of each other and those are wrapped in plastic as well. So it's very well secure. And then of course the mounting pieces and everything are all stuck in the box. So everything is, it basically comes apart. So the sub reflector screws on, the tube goes in, you know, the by itself, and everything is just, you know, modularized, I guess you could say. You know, it's all modular. You all screw it together. So it, it goes very well with our, what we call, modular radios. So you know, it's all we're, a nice package that goes together. We're excited. So we will have that for, uh, for the folks uh, out there shortly. Well, you know what else I'm excited about, Eric? I know what you're excited about. And, you know, right, I'm sure right people here. have been, you know, seeing these on the table here, but let's go ahead and talk about them. Introducing twist on adapters. So, what these are, and exactly what it sounds like. So, for an example, we have a C5X here. You twist the adapter on, and it has effectively become a connectorized radio with uh, two ports on it. And this enables you to use any of your antennas that you have that are five or six gigahertz. Uh, so, with in ports on this net point adapter. And we have a Telemart adapter, which is also import. Mm -hmm. And then we have an AOGCOM adapter, which is RPSMA. Right. So regardless of where you are in the world, you have vendors who are willing to support you. So NetPoint's in Mexico. AOGCOM is in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then Telemart is in India. So we have vendors that have... You know, like I said, they're located around the world who have adapters that will help support you with your kind of deployments. So this really opens up the B5X, the C5X, and future products to be more widely used, I think, and more versatile because you can use your already deployed antennas. You don't have to pull down your antenna and put up the 30 or a 25 or a 20. You know, if you, if you don't want to just strictly use Mimosa products, which... You know, it's fine. You know, you're at the end of the day, you're a wisp. You have to try and, you know, save as much money as you can. If you already have antennas deployed on the tower, already aimed, you don't want to have to take those down and re aim them. Just throw an adapter on for a low cost, screw it on the radio, you're good to go. You just mount the radio, have your cables go into your antenna, done. Easy as pie. And so, uh, again, we have AOGCOM, NetPoint, Telemark. Uh, it allows our twist-on radios to be connectorized using any antenna you want. And this is a picture that I took in our back parking lot when I was actually testing these adapters. I personally have attested 
each of these adapters, mm-hmm. and they all work very, very well. And there's literally almost no difference in performance. It's whichever preferred fender you want to use at that point. I, I am not personally endorsing one over the other. They're all good. Uh, yeah, and, and a quick, uh, a quick uh, information on the, uh, as far as specs. Um, if, if you like to run slant 45 from your point-to-point radio, uh, you, can, you can place this. We've got a vertical and horizontal uh, RF port feed, so dual, uh, dual poles. And we can place that straight up and down vert and horizontal or we can twist it about 45 degrees and lock it down with the set screw on the B5X, C5X, and so forth. Also, we ask, and we help folks online in support as well, uh, is that both ends of the link have the same polarity. So if you've got slant 45 on one end of your link, you want slant 45 on the other. That'll make uh, the link optimization, uh, that'll max that out. If one side is, say, 9 at 90 uh, c- conventional, Right up, straight up and down, and and the other side of the link is at 45. You're, you could expect maybe two, about two two dB of loss in there. So we want to just make sure your your uh, polarity on both ends of the link are lined up, and you're you'll be in good shape. Uh, port isolation, all of these max out around 25 to 30 dB, uh, and then insertion loss. If I take this device and I add it to this guy, his guide here and put it in. We're looking at uh, no more than a, a third of a dB loss, so that's our insertion loss. And then we talk about good coaxes online and in support, and we can help you out with uh, transmission line jumpers and coax and so forth. Great. Well, uh, if you have nothing else to add, Eric, I think we've reached the end of our, our episode here. So uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, Mimosa podcast. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks, Dustin.